Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's B here from B Eat. If you knew, I do mukbangs and story times. If you've been here before, welcome back. Tonight is my third episode of, or well, this morning is my third episode of Cocktails and Chicas. But today it's going to be Coffees and Chicas. Let's welcome to the show my beautiful cousin, all the way from LA, Miss Leia. Hello, hello. Good, good morning, morning or good evening. What time is it in, in Los Angeles at the moment? Uh, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Well, first of all, thank you so much for your time today. Um, guys, as you know, this is a new series that I'm doing. And my cousin, she is my beautiful cousin. She has given me her time. I told her that we can do this anytime next week and that I would work around her schedule. And she's like, yes, okay, I'm ready. So. I have my lipstick on, a full face, and it's not even 11 o'clock yet in Sydney. So thank you for your time and beautiful haircut that you've got. Thank you. Just got it. Just <laughs> yeah, got yeah. it. Just bought it. <laughs> yeah. new, new hair. Who it is? <laughs> what was it like um, getting a haircut for the first time or going out in public with everything that's going on? Uh, it was kind of strange, but you know, everybody was wearing masks, so you kind of feel safe. Everybody was social distancing and the stylist, you know, was like cleaning her hands, sanitizing. It was kind of um, a little awkward at first, but you know, yeah. I got comfortable along the way. Well, I actually, well, you can't tell now because I literally just rolled out of bed, but <laughs> I <Yeah>. actually <laughs> woke up like this. <laughs> no, I actually did get my hair cut and um, like you say, it's really, really awkward. Um, but look, we'll get into that in a minute. Everybody, I want you guys to meet my beautiful cousin, Leia. She actually lives in um, Los Angeles. So this is one of the beauties of the internet. And this is part of the reason why I did this series is because, to be honest, I think I just low-key wanted to secure some chica times with my ladies. So it worked, it worked. Tell all our friends about Leia. Where are you from? Give us an introduction about yourself. I'm Leia. I've been in Los Angeles uh, for about 20 years. I uh, came here as a software engineer. I'm still a software engineer uh, for a healthcare company. And, you know, I was really young when I came here. And, um, you know, I finally, like along the way, you establish your life, you meet new friends, have family. And, you know, you kind of now treat this as your mm -hmm. home. There, there's, there comes a time when, when that just kind of naturally happens, and you know, I think that that happened to me a few years ago. I was just about to say, what's it like in your household? Like, I know you've got a lot of junk food, but you've also got little athlete kids. So, what's food like at home? Well, uh, you know, every now and then uh, you kind of miss home, of course. Mm. And good thing about Los Angeles, it's kind of just across the, the, the Pacific Ocean from the Philippines. So there's a lot of uh, Filipino food here. There's a big Filipino community. Mm -hmm. And there's Jollibee here, as you know. Yes! Um, a lot of uh, Filipino restaurant chains are here too. So you kind of miss it, but uh, not really because a lot of the food from there, you kind of get here, except for fruits. You know, that's yeah. what I miss yes, a yeah. lot. As far as our household goes, um, no, my husband's Egyptian, Egyptian American, and I'm Filipino. And you know, my kids eat a lot of Italian food because of mm -hmm. spaghetti, you know. And uh, most of the time, you know, like uh, we've gotten Americanized because you you kind of have to find a middle ground. Yep. Find, yep. You know, like what's available. And but every now and then, of course, you want to eat your Filipino food. Mm -hmm. He wants his Egyptian food. You know, you kind of get a balance and actually like kind of like diverse kind of cuisine. You know? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the beauty of, I guess, um, the fact that we can get food from anywhere and everywhere now is that apart from the fruit, obviously, and vegetables and stuff, you have basically everything on a platter at your doorstep, even with Uber and uh, DoorDash. DoorDash has uh, only just come to Australia. Up. Yeah, Grubhub. All of that is just new to us. I mean, it's it's been there for you guys for ages. But with my household, so as you know, I'm obviously I'm Filipino. My husband is from El Salvador. Our food, except for the beans, is basically similar. So we love rice. I mean, we we have mango. No mango. It's so good. Mango. You get to keep the container. 
I guess that's kind of beans, right? Those little yeah, beans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those little beans. He loves it. That's that's another weird thing, you know, like you kind of cross over and yes. he loves the food that you love. Yes, but have you not found that the strange thing is, yes, you do have similarities. Like, let's just talk about the rice. With us, I mean, you have the, the fried rice and everything, but then with Filipino food, it's basically just steamed rice and whatever. Guys, we have this thing called ulam. So ulam is, what's the English word for that one (laughs) so it's basically the steamed rice and then a plate of say fish pork whatever soup to have with your rice but with my husband's culture they have like a mixed beans with you know um zucchini and different vegetables in their rice Mm -hmm. so when my mother-in-law comes i need to make sure that the rice is made the way that she likes it but you know like when you traveled to egypt were you sort of were there any culture shock about say the the fragrances i only asked because in the philippines when my husband first came and he smelt baguong which is a fermented what is it shrimp paste little yeah it's shrimp paste yeah yeah so that that is an acquired taste for everyone even filipinos but i i love it so what was it like the first time you went to egypt the first time i went to egypt you know it was i was really fascinated you know it's egypt it's not like you know um i don't know like thailand you know you go to from the mm. Thailand. it's it's you know like something exotic you know i had a, like a different idea in my mind like oh the pyramids you know adventure yeah. that kind of thing so, camels <laughs> cam- yeah exactly but you know but uh after you know, maybe it wasn't the first time because the first mm-hmm. time I went there it was you know like a little bit of um, adventure you know similar to like when I first went to Brazil it was you know, like oh you were mm-hmm. fascinated by a lot of things and and you know the smell the culture it, it kind of just hits you like yeah. something exotic but you know after a while you know like I've been going to Egypt for many years now mm-hmm. and you know the food it you kind of get acclimated to it but it's not like you don't know about it because you've eaten mm. some of it here in America. So let, like, let's say the rice, their rice is totally different, long grain and... Mm. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a little different. Their food has a lot of meat in it. And for us, you know, little bit of meat, vegetables, you know, that kind of thing. Do they have a lot of those tagine things or is that more of a turkey? Yeah, that's that's more Turkish. They are very Egyptian. Funny you mentioned about going to an Asian country and then you mentioned Brazil as well. So I have actually, that's the thing again that um, kind of connects me and my, my cousin, like I actually see her as a girlfriend as well. So she went to Brazil, but I think you traveled all over brazil but i only went to see the um what's that waterfall is called um oh no no i didn't even go to rio i was too scared iguazu yes yes so we went to iguazu falls which was actually um just on the border of argentina we think about the food is when you think you read about it it's kind of like oh yeah you know what to expect but when you get there the fragrances the the flavors and is i don't know if i'm overthinking this but don't you think it's it's so different than when you go to a restaurant in yeah. your local area and you know you think oh yeah i've had this before and then you just have it in that place and it's like what the hell is yeah i know exactly the same oh like, my god you go to china it's like not it's not chinese food and yeah. here you know like of course everything is americanized Americanized. Mm-hmm. it's not exactly the same you know you have the tastes are quite different you know i mm-hmm. feel like they, in in the native countries they put like some some additional msg <laughs> msg <laughs> exactly maybe <laughs> but you know, like you know the um what is it there are some spices that maybe are not available here or yeah like, like star and names and things like yeah, that yeah you know, that, that they're putting there that might not mm. be there it might not be yeah here. so the, the smell is different well, putting that aside, I mean, you know, like we've, we've traveled and we've, we're obviously like looking at different cultures and everything like that. We touched on your little athletes, my little nieces, guys. They are karate kids, swimmers, 
what what other sports do they do and how does that affect what you guys eat at home Let's talk about that yeah so just have to make sure that you feed them in a, mm. a well balanced meal you make sure that the vegetables are there although you know like of course with kids it's it's not really <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, are they picky with the yes, food? And I don't know no, the, the older one is, but the younger one should. Yeah. Be well, do you find that? Um, because I know that with um a lot of athletes, they do like little meals throughout the day, and I know that when um so when uh, when what when did I come to America last year or two years ago? I can't remember. I think it's been two years. Oh my gosh, guys, this year has we're only in September, and it really feels like it's such a long 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 couple of years and it's only been nine months but um i went to visit my cousin who lives in california and when i went to visit them i stayed for about a couple of days so leia as i said has two little athlete kids so she goes yeah yeah just get up whenever i get up she's gone she's gone driven her kids to school i mean like what what time do you wake up and go to sleep with how do you manage work and how do you manage being a wife having two kids you know uh the good thing about being in uh it is that mm -hmm. you get to be anywhere so i mean you have that kind of i don't know i'm not a nurse so i don't have to be at a hospital you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you you can kind of be uh, mobile so i've been like a mobile employee for you know like a few years now and that really helped me with balancing like you know dropping off kids because everything mm -hmm. is mobile so dropping them off at the pool uh, for their swim practices or to swim, I uh, yeah. I mean to school. You you can do it. It's 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 possible. Going to sleep, you know, you can. A lot of things are. Who needs sleep? <laughs> <laughs> you are right. yeah, but, no, it, all you need is good lighting and lipstick. It, there's a lot of like uh, sleep deprivation. Of course, I'm like, I'm not going to lie. It, it, it's really a balance and especially, okay. When, when they're young, when they're infants, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to sleep for the, like the first six months, but, but you know, now after you go through that, honestly, mm -hmm. you kind of like, Oh, okay. It's sleeping like six, seven hours. Isn't that bad. That's a lot for a lot of people. Yeah. I know for a fact that um, our, our auntie, our dearly departed auntie, she she would sleep for three, four hours. That's a little bit, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's enough. Feasible, yeah. I mean, well, sustainable. You could do that for maybe like a few months. Right? Well, you'll be surprised because I know that there's a few people who can do that, but I don't know about the quality because I know for myself, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be cranky and I'm going to be like a zombie. I work from home as well. Being mobile, I know that we travel a lot um interstates or at least in different cities in california for work how has the current situation affected that or has it even affected it yeah i mean like i said i'm a mobile worker and mm -hmm. but a lot of my co-workers are not so yeah. we transitioned over we had like big projects you know uh, healthcare, care right mm -hmm. so there's a lot of covid related uh, modifications on the website that kind of thing mm -hmm. so you have to you know adjust to the situation and actually it's yeah. weird people tend to work longer because there's no there's no like time like that you, you don't have to there's go. no downtime that's funny that you mentioned that because i i myself um before being 100 percent working from home i used to work from home about three four times a week Mm -hmm. And when it was an option, it was a great option because it was like, oh, yeah, you know. And then when it's become a full time thing, believe it or not, I'm starting to miss the different personalities in the office. You know, people that are from different levels that you kind of see in the kitchen that you didn't want to talk to before. But now you're like, oh, what's happening to that weird guy? Yeah. I used to love that downtime you know when you log off from work and i call it my um my brain rest time for about 45 minutes on the train switching off here as soon as i log off oh i've got to go make dinner oh as soon as i yeah. wake up it's like oh i've got to make coffee and then i've got to log on I mean, you're kind of used to it now. You've done it for about five years, but you still kind of miss that, you know, that that separation, I guess. Yeah, a little bit. What I've done is I've established a new routine. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I drop off the kids at swim, you know, I don't go home. I kind of walk or like, you know, do some walking um, around the pool area. So you get your own exercise in. That helps, you know, because that downtime, you know, when, mm -hmm. when you're, I feel like when you're cooking or when you're, you know, not doing anything, I don't know, mentally active, I guess. <coughs> Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs>
it's cancelled. Oh my god. I know. So okay. I know that I'm interviewing very successful food loving business women and career women, but that is one of our well it's not a secret now, but it's one of our um favorite things to connect about, which is um keeping up with Kardashians. This is their last season. <laughs> what are we gonna do? <laughs> We're in our forties, I mean our, our late twenties and Oh my gosh. <laughs> like Bible, this is so sad. This is like I can't even. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> switch gears. Yeah. So um the other thing that I wanted to ask is are you guys okay in LA? I know that there's a lot of it's fire season and you met you were mentioning there was an earthquake today. What's yeah, happening? there was an earthquake last night. So fire season, of course, it's not just California now, it's like the entire West Coast. Oregon, mm. parts of Colorado is also burning. Mm. So I, I know you guys have your own thing there in, in yes, Australia. Yes, in January. But yeah. I, mean, I mean, I think it switches every time, uh, you know, like one, our season is like summer, mm -hmm. and then here is summer also, right? So it kind of switches. Yes. But I feel yes. bad, like it's becoming like a, a norm, especially, mm -hmm. you know, like we have the pandemic, you know, everybody's, you know, talking a lot of weird things happening. It's kind of sad. It's really scary. But anyway, so we're, we're talking about food and oh, I forgot to tell you guys. So today it's um, obviously it's like 11 o'clock. It's 1130 now. So we're going to wrap it up. But I had myself my coffee. I have to show you guys my favorite mug. It says, where is it? This is always right. I got my coffee. What what are you drinking this evening? Bubble tea. Bubble tea. I think that's bubble what we call it over there. Bubble tea. Yeah, pearl tea we call it. So I think you guys call it boba, right? I think boba. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, in Tagalog and, and in Spanish, so boba is bobo, the the female version of bobo, which means um dumb. So it's like. <laughs> This is, this lady is like super successful and she's like, I've got boba time and I love Kardashians. Oh my God. <laughs> but, okay, well, in all seriousness, thank you so much. I know that you're always busy. So thank you for always having time for me, especially for my shenanigans. Of course. Things like this. One of our other cousins, Leia's sister actually, is hopefully in the next couple of weeks, um, we're going to tee up some time. Lots of interesting things as well with the baking and things like that. So oh, I wish they could send it over. I really want, oh my gosh, I cut your accent. Oh my God. <laughs> be catching Australian accent because I've been watching some Australian shows. Netflix. Oh, but you got to have that Filipino Australian, you know, that Australian Trying okay. hard kind of accent, you know, that good I might. Good I might. <laughs> good I might. Yuck. I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> you know, you want to you wanna come for a Barbie? <laughs> what do you call it? Like, I, can really, I suck at that. You know, like I can't even. Yeah, Miss a good <laughs> Shrimp on the Barbie. Shrimp on the Barbie. <laughs> but you know what's funny? Okay, I'm he's. Happy, I don't want to offend people. I mean, like. Somebody, I saw um, uh, somebody, uh, an actress, I think it's, mm. um, what's her name? Australian actress or? A Australian actress, you know, who was singing in... Uh, like, Olivia Newton-John? No, uh, she's new. The uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody says that in Australia. Yeah, no, 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 she's, she's absolutely right. So what it is, is that we don't actually even say shrimp, we say fawn. Really? So yeah, 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 yeah. So shrimp to us is those teeny tiny little things, and prawns is like what um, Paul Hogan. I think he was the one that started it all, and it's like Rebel Phillips. Sorry, I love. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes later. <laughs> Whoa, I love her. I love her as well. She's. Do you know that she's a lawyer? What? It's amazing, but um. Yes. Yeah, so, wait, hold on. How did we get there? What were we talking about? Shrimp on the barbie. Ah, shrimp on the barbie, mate. Yeah, yeah, mate. So it's like, I don't know if you've ever seen Joe Coy. On one of his, his latest specials, he was talking about some Ameri uh, Filipino uncles that have such a thick American accent, but they hide it within their accent and then they just sound like like an Elvis. That's the same here. I mean, you know, as I was saying before, like I came here when I was 10, which is when you basically start to develop your accent and develop everything about yourself. And then as soon as you start speaking with other, I guess, Filipinos or like, you know, I don't know. 
before I let you go, because I gotta let you go. When you went to the Philippines, or whenever you go to the Philippines, do you find that you subconsciously kind of change your accent? Because I know that yeah, I do. Yeah, because you know that's the thing. You, I don't know if it's subconscious too, because you don't want to sound. You like, don't want to be OA. Yeah, you don't want. Yeah, you don't want to alienate people, right? Because you speak in a certain way, you're gonna say like, oh, uh, like you know, you say one of my coworkers um, is Filipino and Ashraf is saying my husband is saying, why does he say dollar? <laughs> what is he? <laughs> what is he? He just say dollar, and I'm like. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain because you know when you're talking to somebody, yeah. like, oh yeah, five dollars. You know, you, you, you <laughs> want to say. I mean, like, if I go to the Philippines, I I'm gonna say it that way. Yes, I really really love that. But I've kind of noticed that um, when I went there, like a lot of my well, my nieces, they sound very, like, they they sound more oh, American. Yeah. yeah, but it's like it's not American. That it's not American at all. It's like a like a. Like a I, I, private school accent. Ah, that's what it is. Okay, that's probably what it is. But I've noticed that, you know, like when I went there, to me, I specifically speak, not even Tagalog accent, but I speak in an Ilocano accent. And I think that's kind of helped me because I'm a really good bargainer. And you know, like when we go shopping in the markets, that's helped me a lot. I mean, look at my face. I look very, very Filipino. No one's gonna try to hustle me out of my money. Because I'm just like, okay, Ninam, this is only $20. This is not $35, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you don't want them to treat you like you're a foreigner, right? Me, when I go there, I, I'm really proud of my Filipino-ness. I'm not there like, oh my god, I'm traveling and this is like so hot. Exactly. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to feel like an outsider. When you go there, you kind of just want to belong. Exactly. All right. Well, then, um, again, I was finding off about five minutes ago but i'm overtaking again <laughs> well, we can go on for hours you know <laughs> definitely and look i know it's dinner time and it is saturday night um and look i'm gonna i should get up now and have breakfast so thank you Adelaide, for your time thank you thank you so much and have a great weekend love you love you bye bye